um, that's heated by the core, the leftover very hot core of this star. And what about these like rays that I'm seeing in this image? Right, there, so there's also rays in the outer regions that you can kind of see, and these are holes in the inner nebula that are actually allowing the, the central star's light to come out and kind of light it up like, uh, you know, patchy clouds with the sun shining through. Wow, oh yeah, that's what it looks like. That's so cool. Um, so you're actually a mid-infrared astronomer, which is different than near-infrared. And so what can you tell us about the details in this mid-infrared image? So this is, it looks quite different in color, um, partly because we're, we're seeing different kinds of physics going on here. So we're actually seeing in the blue, you see a lot of blue. The blue is actually due to hydrocarbon grains that are emitting very strongly in the blue for MIRI. And they show the very similar structures to what we see in orange and near cam because the, the hydrocarbon, the molecular hydrocarbon actually forms on the surface of dust grains. And so again, as we move inward, we, we see that, that the inner region is again hot ionized gas, but now it glows red because that's where it emits longest for, the strongest for MIRI wavelengths. Okay. And then as we go into the center, we see kind of the surprise for us, which is we knew this was a binary star, but we, ba we effectively didn't really see much of, the, of the, the actual star that produced the nebula. But now in MIRI, this star glows red because it has dust around it. So in MIRI, we got to see both stars very clearly. Yeah, yeah, you can't see it in the first image really, but there's two stars there. So that's a fun surprise. Um, and I think that there's another little Easter egg you want to tell us about? Yeah, so this was, uh, the Easter egg is this kind of uh, narrow filament up in the up in the top that's radially aligned. You can kind of see it very clearly in the mirror image. It shows up as this blue blue structure. And it points very much to the central sources. So I thought, oh, this must just be a density enhancement in the outer nebula. I thought that very, very strongly, but other people on the team were like, no, it's a background edge on galaxy. Well, I made a bet that said, no, it's part of the nebula. By the way, I lost the bet because then we looked more carefully at both the near cam and mirror images, and it's very clearly an edge on galaxy with a dust lane and a bulge. So I lost the bet. Well, you lost the bet, but you got these gorgeous images. So I think it's a win for everybody. Anything else you'd like to say today? I can't wait to see where we go from here. Oh, neither can I. All right. Thanks so much. Back to you, Michelle. Thank you, Alex and Carl. And I have to say that image is absolutely spectacular. So as you know, people from all over the world are watching us today and joining in our, in our excitement as we release for Webb's first science images. We've been checking in with our colleagues in Europe and Canada throughout the program, but we also want to take a moment to include the people at the oh-so-many viewing parties scattered around the world like stars in the night sky. So let's check in with some of them now. First, we go all the way to Perth, Australia. Do we have a signal from Perth? I guess nothing from Perth right now. Uh, maybe we have some of our other feeds. We're gonna check in with them right now. Do we have Winnipeg, Canada? Oh, there it is, there's Australia, there's Perth. Hey, waving to Perth, Australia. Thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, next we're going to Winnipeg, Winnipeg, Canada. Hello, Winnipeg. At a planetarium, everybody's enjoying the show, I hope. Okay, Dayton, Ohio. <laughs> Everybody's watching on the, uh, there we go, Dayton, Ohio. Hello, everybody, Dayton. Nice to have you here with us. There we go, yes. Hey, hey, Dayton. Hey. <laughs> They're jumping up and down. <laughs> Hi. Okay, all the way, Bangalore, India. India, Bangalore. Hello, hello, hello to Bangalore, India. Hey. <laughs> That's absolutely wonderful. Hey. <laughs> Okay, so I, I, I hope you enjoy the, the rest of the images we're releasing. Okay, of course NASA's family extends all over the country. The team at JPL in Pasadena, California, they're on site to celebrate with us. So hello JPL! Some of my favorite people in the world. Hey, hello! And I think the last place we're going to right now is Northrop Grumman, one of our major contractors. Hello Northrop Grumman! Oh hey, all right! <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Nice to see you, Northrop Grumman. All right, now there's also a big watch party right here on the NASA Goddard campus. Many of these people have worked on the mission itself, and we also have top NASA leadership and representatives from our government. So, hello! <laughs> hello, watch party at Goddard! Yay!
<laughs> okay, wonderful. So, I mean, at NASA, we are so fortunate to have all of these friends and colleagues around the globe. A major partner in the web mission is the European Space Agency. ESA contributions have been essential to so many aspects of this project, including Webb's spectacular launch on the Ariane 5 rocket last December. I'm very pleased to turn over the show for a few minutes to Katie Haswell. She's joining me from the European Space Operations Center in Darmstadt, Germany. Hello, Katie. Good afternoon. Thanks, Michelle. Thank you, Michelle, and welcome to Germany. We're at the European it's Space Agency. Place. I'm still getting all kinds of IFB from lots of center. People. It's where the teams effectively fly the satellites. They're a little bit uh, of a cross between air traffic controllers and uh, pilots. We have lots of different control rooms here. This is the main control room. And as you can see today, it's not in use. So we've been lucky enough to uh, move in here for today. I have two very special um, experts with me, both scientists from the European Space Agency. Uh, uh, Giovanna Giardino is a uh, NISPEC scientist. Giovanna okay. is, uh, has been working on that for, for many years and lots to tell us about that. And Mark McCorkran is a special advisor for space, for science and exploration. These two guys have been working on the Webb Space Telescope for a long time. So we're very grateful to have you with us. Thanks, folks. Thank you. Um, Pleasure. We, we are excited to reveal our image with you. But before we do that, we thought we'd give you a little bit of background um, because we've come here today uh, because these guys were the first ones uh, to pick up the signal uh, during the uh, web launch, when web first launched. They run a system called S-Track, which is NASA's deep space uh, tracking system, and they were listening out when Webb called home. And uh, the controllers here have been looking after a whole very, very impressive list of missions since uh, 1968. ESA has played a very, very important role during the Webb, uh, for the Webb Space Telescope. They provided the launch on board the awesome Ariane 5 launch vehicle from the Guiana Space Center. The atmosphere in the Mission Control Center was uh, electric, I can tell you I was there. Um, they've also provided people. We have 15 ESA scientists working at uh, Space Telescope in Baltimore, and also they have provided the um, uh, infrared uh, spectrograph, the near-infrared spectrograph, and also half of the MIRI instrument, which is the mid-infrared instrument. Let's take a look at those now. Webb's four scientific instruments include NearSpec, the Near Infrared Spectrograph, led by ESA. NearSpec splits near infrared light from astronomical objects into its components. Like a barcode, this will help scientists understand the physics of the objects they're observing, from their temperature to atomic makeup. NearSpec can observe parts of an object or the sky using an image slicer and an array of microscopic shutters. Webb's integrated science instrument module, located behind the main mirror, also contains MIRI, a mid-infrared camera and spectrograph. Seen here during testing, MIRI has been developed by a partnership between Europe and the US. MIRI detects mid-infrared light from planets, stars and galaxies. It can analyse molecules to help us deduce what astronomical objects are made of and peer into clouds of gas and dust where stars and planets are born. Together, these instruments will help Webb detect and analyse light from the very dawn of time, revealing the universe as never before. So, so let's get ready to reveal our image. And remember that one of Webb's jobs is to find out about galaxies, more about the galaxies, but also to help us to understand how they change. And this image is going to be very, very useful for that. Let's reveal it now. There it is. It's called Stefan's Quintet and it's wondrous. Giovanna, what are we looking at? Yes, like you said, quintet. So we are looking at five galaxies. Galaxies are uh, 
this giant structure that as we've seen, we see everywhere around us in the universe, they contain from million to hundred billions of stars. And in fact, we live in one of them, the Milky Way. And here we see uh, five of them. This is a, a closer um, a galaxy uh, in the foreground. And these four are uh, at a distance of about uh, uh, 300 uh, million light years from us. And they're locked in a close interaction, a sort of cosmic dance driven by the uh, gravitational force. Um, you can see here yeah, these two uh, in a process of merging uh, within each other. This is a very important image uh, and an area to study because it really shows that the type of interaction that drives the evolution of galaxies, that, that, uh, that's the mechanism of galaxies' growth. I love this image of the cosmic dance <laughs> moving through each other. Uh, Mark, there's a lot going on though in this image, isn't there? There is. So this is a near-infrared image. With NIRSPEC, we can zoom into this area, and we have this technology that allows us to take uh, uh, thousands of images at different wavelength channels, uh, so see the, uh, the, the this distribution of the gas, what's going on in the gas uh, in different regions uh, of, the, of this core area, and understand the, the composition of the gas, the velocities, um, the temperature. So that's imp very important to understand the physics. So that it's, it's giving us so much information, and it just shows the power of this telescope. Mark, this is just the beginning, though, isn't it? I think that's a very important takeaway from today. You know, we, these are like pictures just taken over a period of five days. And every five days we're getting more data, which will contribute more in that, in that direction. It's a culmination of decades of work, but it's just the beginning of decades. And you know, what we've seen today with these images is essentially that we're ready now. This telescope is working fantastically well. And you know, to, to, to borrow a phrase from a famous rock musician, you know, we're ready to turn this telescope up to 11. It really is time. It's fantastic. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, both of you. Back to you, Michelle. Thanks, Katie. It is so great to have you and your colleagues with us on this historic day. So before we get to the fifth and final image reveal of the day, it cannot be said enough that an achievement like the James Webb Space Telescope is something bigger than any one of us. It's bigger than any organization, any country. This truly takes a planet. Web belongs to all of us, and starting today, the discoveries start and they're not going to stop. This is just the beginning. We've said several times throughout the broadcast that the Web mission is about people, and during the construction of the Great Telescope, people started to see themselves in it, literally. Day after day, people visited the observation window at NASA Goddard, and looking through the glass, they snapped selfies of themselves reflected in the gigantic golden mirror. These photos are actual reflections of the enormous human investment and the emotional commitment that brought this mission to life. And now, years later, that mission is finally collecting light from the earliest days of the universe, all the way to worlds in our own solar system. It's the same mirror that reflected the many faces who see themselves as part of the journey to understand our shared origins. Let's stop for a moment and appreciate the people behind Webb. Okay, it's time now for the last image to be revealed. Here we go. So Amber Strawn is Webb's deputy project scientist. He's here with me today to share the final big reveal of the day. So Amber, it is so good to see you. How are you feeling? Oh, so great, so exciting. What a, what a great day this is. Yeah, so one of the things that we're gonna do is before we get to the final image, the James Webb